Hello, everyone. I'm Cindy Soderberg. I'm grateful to be here today and asked to speak for this year's Stewardship Drive. I would like to share with you my Thanksgiving story about my spiritual journey with Aldersgate Church. Some of you are familiar with parts of my story. Either you've heard it right from the horse's mouth, or maybe you've been a witness to my story. I surely don't mind telling my story over and over, and I hope you don't mind listening to it because it renews my faith in God and gives me insight and reminds me where I've been and where I've landed today. It all began about five decades ago in 1966. It cracks me up that I started with the youth group, and now I'm part of the young at heart group, the seniors. 1966 is the year when I first entered the doors of Aldersgate with my mom and dad, Emma and Carl Soderberg. I was an awkward, self-conscious 13-year-old. The three of us had just moved back from California, and I was the new kid in town. My memory's not clear with a lot of details, but I remember Reverend Larry Lavelle and being encouraged to join the youth group. The group was small, but so was the church as it was new and growing. The sanctuary back then was located where the fellowship hall is currently. But what I most remember is that I was welcomed and accepted. I attended the youth activities through middle and high school, participated in confirmation, youth meetings, celebrations, camp, and mission trips. The youth leaders were awesome, and parents were always hosting, carpooling, and helping with the activities. We had fun. After high school, I ventured out, excited to be on my own, and drifted away from church as a young adult. The road I traveled was definitely not a straight one, but rather curvy, with detours, stop signs, and dead ends. I became an EC, Easter Christmas member, and generally came on Mother's and Father's Day. All to stay in good graces with my parents, or more than with God. Yet any time I entered the doors of Aldersgate, I was always welcomed and was remembered. In 1974, I was married in the church by Reverend Wooldridge. The wedding festivities were taken care of by the ladies of the church, and they also honored me with a lovely shower. I still own a crochet blanket that was made for me by Jackie Lindstrand. That's what a faithful community does, helps us to celebrate memorable occasions, happy ones and the sad ones too. A conversation has stuck with me from the marriage preparation counseling with Reverend Wooldridge. He asked us questions about who does what household tasks in each of our family homes. Our answers were the total opposite. I didn't get it back then, but I did later. Bet you can guess what happened to that marriage. Life went on and I kept traveling my journey I tried other churches and religions, but my spiritual beginnings never left me. About 15 years ago, I found myself once again entering the doors of Aldersgate, when David Tenney was pastor. This time, I entered with my friend Ruth. We were looking for a new home church, and Pastor Tenney thought Ruth and I would fit in well with the choir and its new director, Dale Heidel. Once again, I was welcomed and had a reason to keep coming back. The doors stayed open. There was a couple of years gap in the last 15 years when the road again had some detours and stops with some challenging life choices I made. But I and we both found our way back, and guess what? The doors were opened, and we were welcomed and greeted. Right now, I find that my road is more of a smoothly paved surface, at least for the time being. I feel lifted with gratitude and grace, knowing God is present in this church and in my life at Aldersgate. As Pastor Wanji states, 
Let's keep moving forward as if we are God's people, even in the unknown. Today, I feel that my faith will carry me through the unknown due to my lessons learned. That is why it is important to continue our financial commitments so Aldersgate's doors can continue to open and welcome all those that enter at any stage of their life and spiritual journey. Please send your pledge cards to the office or submit online by November 18th for Consecration Sunday on November 21st, when they will be blessed. Oh, one more story. I remember after my confirmation and becoming a member of the church, I signed my pledge card. I think it was for $10 a month. I also remember getting my first pledge report, letting me know I was tardy with my pledge. <laughs> Today, I'm thankful for automatic withdrawal, and hopefully I have redeemed myself with staying current with my pledges. Let's move forward in the next year as if and keep our doors wide open for everyone.